take up again. Oh, uh oh, uh -oh. my bad. I do have some notes. <laughs> okay, Deidre, do you have your hand up? Say, I was going to say, Victor, um, as as um, Chair Barry mentioned that, um, I was just trying to figure out what happened to the task force that they were creating for um, Columbia's task force. Right, they talked about education. They talked about housing. We talked about it oh, with them. Right. That's right. right. So I think we need to um, find oh, out where they are. Yes, that task yes. I mean, they came to us and then seniors, right? Walter, seniors, education, housing. I, yeah. And we were supposed to, yeah. It just dropped off your radar. It was um, hmm. community. It was Phoebe, Sade and, um, it was Phoebe, and Phoebe and someone else. And Loft, probably. Right. But the mm -hmm. what, what we were told about that was they were putting together an internal body of stakeholders on their end, and then they were going to have a neighborhood advisory committee or, or something to that effect of people external. And so I know I don't know that the external part ever got formed, but we should we should check in with them again. Yeah. If I had to if I had to guess, they might say that that's on pause until the new president settles in, but we oh. should ask. We know we should ask anyway. I'm just I wouldn't be surprised if that was the answer we got. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll follow up. I'm glad. Uh, thank you both for that comment. Um, I do remember that because I I took a exception to it when I looked at the members of the board that they were forming. They were all internal, but then they did explain they would have a external um, part of it, which would be involve us and other people, other stakeholders in the community. I just didn't want them to get too far along with their part of it without getting input from us as well. So I will, I'll bring that up to Lofton. Um, I was in communication with him earlier than this week. Um, a fact, I don't think, no, Salman's not on, but there was a comment made at general board meeting regarding McDonald's on 125th and Broadway that it was not coming back. I sent an email to Lofton and Lofton said he checked with the real estate department for Columbia and they said it will be back. Um, I explained that it was a source of inexpensive food for a lot of people in the neighborhood and a source of jobs and ownership for the person who you know owned that particular franchise. So I'm hoping that it comes back uh, just for those reasons. Um, so we'll see. I'll keep an eye on that as well. Um, moving forward to arts and culture, I don't think the Dario or anyone. Well, no, I do have Walters. Walter, you're still on arts and culture committee, correct? Yes, I am. Okay, great. So two of the items I was looking at there going through the CBA was studio space for local artists um that i know i've heard people talk about that also exhibition space um what was being made available for people i think if off the top of my head it was supposed to be five thousand square feet available for the community for exhibition space and studio space now that's often tied to where they are in progress with the buildings. So I have to look back. It's usually like whatever site is being um, erected and what phase they're in ties into what triggers something. But what's your what's your feedback or any feedback on space for local artists? Um, we, we haven't mentioned anything in the last few meetings about that. Right. Um, and it's it just uh, John Martin, just contacted me last week about he wants to eat, well I think he put something in the email today but he was asking did we have do we know of any space available so hmm. we and now that we're not going to meet now again till September we have to put that back um back on our regular agenda to keep keep up with that because I, I still see it, you know that, that when we would we just met in the in the forum and right behind the forum is that arts that arts building. Um, where it's, uh, it was supposed to be theater there, supposed to be exhibitions and stuff there. No one knows what's going on with that building. Uh, if there's something that they're doing, they're not letting us know that it's happening. Maybe it's just for the students, but it really should be something we should be able to access. 
So we we have to proceed. Our Tina and I have been working on artist um, um, uh, information and stuff to disseminate our information, but right. that's very important. You're right about that, Victor. We have not. We've gotten away from that, and we also got away from the theater on 146th Street. As I see now, there are two businesses on site. So I don't know. I, I, Dan has not has not been. Uh, uh, I guess he's had some personal stuff of what's going on with them. But we haven't met. We don't know what's going on. And I asked him about the two businesses that are there because I mean we were talking about. I mean that's down the road. But we were still talking about use having that available to us. So we um, we have to now we're going to te- uh, we have to get a new t- chairperson. But we we have to refocus that. We're, at starting September, we're going to have to put that on our agenda on a regular basis because that's important. Um, to keep on keep up with what's going on with that CBA. Someone. Someone, I forget if it was Jonathan Sinegub or I, I forget who it was, but they emailed Dan asking for an update and, and I was CC'd. And Dan's response was that um, the Jazz Museum has also expressed interest and was setting up a tour for later in that week, I think. I'll, I'll dig up the email, but there was an update. Um, but you were correct. He had been out on leave for some family stuff. That um, Actually, Barry, that was my email asking him what the status was because I hadn't seen or heard from him in a little while. And he did say that there was interest from the uh, Harlem Jazz Museum in the building. So for those who you don't know, they're on 146 and Broadway in, in the block, there's the old theater there and um, looking to revitalize that to some extent with developers and have housing there as well, but also keep the um, theater intact as best they could. Some of it can't be saved, but some of it can. So um, we will follow up with Dan again and get a full report. Does Dan sit in on your um, arts meetings? Um, is he a part no, of the he's arts? Not, he's not in uh, arts and culture. Okay. So so I think that's like an ad hoc or... or, right. or yeah, so yeah, he was... It's an ad hoc. He's on the landmarks part yes, of it. Yes, he's on the landmarks committee. Okay, so we maybe he can give in September, Walter, maybe ask Daria to have him come and report to give a report on what's going on, update us. All right, so and maybe General Boy, we can have him do that as well, but good follow-up. Um, well, wait, you said something about the Jazz Museum. Are you talking about the, the, the one that's in the Brownstone on like 130-something, the National Jazz Museum? On 130, um, yeah. on to, One, that's yeah. a small space. Uh, right. uh, that could that couldn't handle too. I mean, if that's the space you're talking about, it couldn't handle too many things there. No, it's, I think uh, Barry can correct me wrong. I think they were looking to do something in conjunction with the theater. Maybe yes, they theater. were. They were, yeah. Right, and expanding, which will give it, them it, more space. It was a joint thing with Classical oh. Theater Harlem and them. So they were talking about both of them being something. What uh, was the other one, Sydney? What was the other you said? Talking Organiz- about RKO Theater, right? The, right. The, so the, the last we discussed, it was Classical Theater of Harlem and the Jazz Museum, Museum were the two interested parties to possibly do something on that site. Now, I have not heard updates in quite a while. Um, so, but that, those were the two nonprofit kind of entities that were being discussed. Okay. okay. And this is an aside. Um, the so, Metro Theater on Broadway and and on uh, 99th Street. Right. Uh, one of the guys I met, he ran for city council. Keith uh, the chart chief something. He ran for city council uh, for the seventh seventh um, in city council. But he's on the the, the committee to restore that theater. He told me they're, matter of fact, they're having a meeting tomorrow in front of the theater. And I really right. want, I, I know you're having yours with the HDFC and something else is going on. Uh, also, yeah, William Hamer's meeting, but the seniors. But uh, I want to find out what they're doing because I don't know where the funding source is coming from. And it might be something that we might be able to use. So uh, we, we've kind of like been, we cooled down with our meetings, with our energy, trying to get, we went inside, we looked at, you know, we try to get architects and, and, you know, from the students and stuff. And we just really put that on the back burner now. So it really should be, you know, before something really happens with that building, we, we lose it. Yeah, I think we're talking about Keith Harris, Walter. Yes, yes. 
Okay, good good point, uh, Walter. Take that back up again. Um, in you know, in the fall, if not before. Um, anything else on that? The other item on arts and culture was the Harlem Legacy Project and the Living History Project that's listed um, in the Community Benefits Agreement. So, you know, sort of on the cultural side, something we need to. I'm going to ask Daria to take another look at that to see what West Holland Development Corp is willing to do to help that along to um, make that a reality. As things change and we lose buildings, we lose the legacy of Harlem and that needs to be saved um, before it's all gone. You, know, you tear down buildings and jazz clubs or whatever. I mean, fortunately the cotton club that's sitting there is um, not to be touched according to the benefits agreement at this point. So hopefully that stays intact. But Showman's is still closed. Is it still closed? Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, the, both yeah. of the owners, the owner and his wife passed away from COVID or during COVID. And I heard that the children were interested in keeping it open, but I haven't seen anything yet. Uh, which, uh, which entity or location, Barry? Showman's. Yeah. Jazz bar on 125th Street in our district. Shellman's? Yeah, yes. Shellman's. Huh. Right That's next to the post office. Off of Morningside. Oh. Yes. Okay. Okay. Right off, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, we lost St. Nicholas Pub to the fire. Oh, yeah. That space is still empty. Um, yep, it sure is. You no, know what's happening with that? That, you know, a lot of people came through there. That was well known. Um, I know they were trying to do some type of documentary on that. One of the, uh, Art groups were trying to do something. I think they presented at um, Arts and Culture. Um, I was going to ask before anything is erected there. Hopefully, will we have contact with that entity <laughs> to have a say? You know? I'll have to come through the landmarks committee. Okay, I just want to. Oh, okay. I, I I figured that that much, and hopefully that will happen. Heather, that building was landmarked. I believe it's in the historic district, the okay. Sugar Hill Extension District. Okay. Okay. Good Hamilton know. Heights, um, Sugar Hill Historic District. Gotcha. Gotcha. Sydney, are you still on the line? I have a question for you. I'm here. So this is way off my on my not on my agenda, but I was asked by one of my neighbors last week when they looked up at the tower at 153rd how that happened and how that can be avoided in the future. I didn't have an exact answer. I knew some of it had to do with his making a historic district that covered all of that. Um, I said it was built as of right. Um, was I correct in those two things to begin with? Yeah, I, I, I mean, the, the way we got there is that there um, is allowances to developers if they build community space and if they you know have quote unquote affordable housing within it uh and all of those things allow them to you know possibly build higher and then we had the added addition of the fact that it was a through lot which gave uh also some ability to go higher um and those things are on the books showing it as of right because they added those things how we stop it in the future is a trickier subject. <laughs> Barry, right. do you have any further thoughts on that? <laughs> uh, I would just add that the major issue was that they were left out of the 2011 rezoning, I think, because okay. Columbia right. got a rezoning for Manhattanville as part of the M package with eminent domain. And part of the thing that the community got was that DCP conducted a neighborhood rezoning, Department of City Planning conducted a neighborhood rezoning of Hamilton Heights. And so, for example, that's why the building on 145th Street in Amsterdam, 1727, they can only go up to nine stories without a special zoning action or variance. Um, in this case, however, that block was not in was not rezoned. And so, you know, if you contrast that to 142nd Street, where 
it was down zoned to protect the townhouses and then the developer wanted a rezoning so that they could build a tower and tear down the townhouses. That's that's in contrast to that untouched block, which has zoning from 1961, where in addition to all the factors Signy mentioned, there are no height limits in the old zoning designations, only in what are now called contextual designations. And so beyond what Signy mentioned, I strongly suspect and i'd have to check that they also purchased unused development rights from surrounding buildings on their block yeah. which are colloquially known as air rights and then they pile them all up in one lot which allows them to go much higher than everything around them okay um, so so it, it is a fact of the zoning being very old and permissive and it wasn't included in the rezoning it's not in a historic district under lpc um, and they probably bought air rights, and it's also a special, you know, it's, it's a through lot, which means that you can do more with those. And, and a historic, and uh, you know, having the a historic district go through there would not solve the problem. It would just make, you know, a possibility in the future of being able to rezone that area, perhaps more likely. But okay. it, that's yeah. a long term solution. We also we we also have a tool that we've never taken delivery of um, from City College's Bond Center that will show us where all of the unused air rights are in our district. Mm -hmm. We actually, Signy, yeah. we should we should no, get it's access. Been long time coming. You need to get yeah. Oh yeah. wow, that sounds useful for sure. Yeah. Well, we paid them for it. That was oh. and, and oh. then. Oh. Uh, Got a little overwhelmed. <laughs> yeah. What happened, Jenny? Not a ton. What did you say? Interesting. Uh, well, April, April was kind of running that project. Okay. okay. Very good. That that I think it will be very useful. Yeah. Really. Yep. All right. I'll give uh, sort of an answer back to my neighbor about what's going on there. Um, okay. Any comments from our new members. We were just talking about a building on 153rd between Riverside and Broadway. Does anyone know exactly how many stories it is, um, Barry or Sydney? Uh, was it 23 or 26? 23? Okay. Mm. It, looks, it looks taller, but yeah, I mean, wow. textually it's so high. You, I was standing in Riverside Park two weeks ago and looked up and I- No, yeah, it lists everything around it. Wow, I was like, that thing is huge. And then I've heard people say something about the light at night on the top of the building is glaring and just mm -hmm. a huge building. It's it's just not in context with, it, with everything else around here. Yeah, you know, we've reached out to the Department of Buildings about the light issue. Oh, great. Okay. Okay. So um, just trying to avoid some of that in the future. The Tower on 125th, Columbia's Tower is pretty tall as well. And so is Union Theologicals. Um, mm -hmm. Tower. Those are all pretty tall. Um, I guess those kinda... are all excellent examples of why Morningside Heights needed to be rezoned. Mm -hmm. There you go. There you go. So just bring everybody up to speed. Any questions, comments on what we've covered so far? Oh, okay. No, it's clear for me. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you for attending as well, and Miss Barry okay. as well. Uh, Miss Waring, thank you. And uh, Tiago, correct? Yes. Um, so, number six item was CB9 Community Resource Fairs. We had an excellent, excellent health resource fair in the beginning of May, May 2nd, which also to me, it was like an open house for our new office on 133rd and Broadway, letting people know where we are. It was seniors, Victor. What did I say? Oh. You said no, but I was going to let you get away with it. Oh, yeah. I was, gonna, I was laughing. I was like, wait, did I miss that Oh, one? seniors. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I, was, I was looking at my notes. Wrong notes. Senior resource. <laughs> um, that, like I said, served sort of as an open house for the new building. So on uh, my notes, I'm just saying in the future, maybe that's probably where I was thinking a health fair would be great to expose residents to what's going on. Columbia has some great facilities for health. They have testing, 
uh, walk, drop in center where you can get your blood pressure, cholesterol tested right there, um, things of this nature. So I was just thinking of what other fairs we could do, resource fairs, um, education as well, letting people know what's available between charter school, public schools, after school programs and, and things of this nature, just kind of you know, brainstorming to let people know and our residents what's in the area, um, health, education, housing as well, um, and what we have our legal, uh, you know, partners. People often have problems with housing; they don't know where to turn. We need to let them know that there are Manhattan Legal Services and Palante Harlem are here to help, and we can channel that, you know, through us. And we have the one day a month. Um, is it the first Thursday, Yutha? For seniors? No, for legal, Manhattan Legal Services. Oh, yes. The first Thursday of every month, with the exception of July and August. Right. So just want to get that word out to um, the people in the community. So any comments on any additional fears uh, that you think might be useful? Just making some notes of that. So, uh, so question. Oh, Walter, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, <laughs> uh, you said that you said he probably was a Freudian slip, but a community resource fair, which would incorporate a few of our groups, um, that would kind of be really nice. I mean, not only just specific like education or health. Right. A joint and, and include the youth, include the seniors. I mean, you know, it wouldn't be, I mean, it would just be a factor as well as our, our politicians, because this is, a, and our local, our local businesses, because we will, like youth will tell you, are we, we really, we lucked up with getting a free donations on food. It, it was, the, the, the dental clinic came, we had people doing, I mean, we, that could really be expanded. You know, that could be a to a, call, we'll call it a community community resource fair. Community resource fair. Yes, okay. that's my suggestion. Yeah, right. I was going to piggyback on that as well because when you mentioned the space, um, uh, behind the forum, which is like an open area, unless we want to move it somewhere else, but that area is very open and easily accessible. Um, and, and I, and so I was thinking that maybe we could do something more comprehensive. So Walter took that out of my mouth, um, do something comprehensive. And I don't know if your thoughts were to do it during the summer, but, um, it, it is a way to keep people engaged and mm -hmm. people are out and about. And even though we're off, you know, it, it is a thought for sure. Um, I know the, the cannabis task force is looking to piggyback on a um uh, uh what is it a street um um fair or street event that's already happening so it's in the community already so it's a way for us to remain visible so okay. and that's during the summer in august right i was thinking more of the fall people are back from vacations and I mean we could take a look at the summer people back from vacations and school starts up again to um but I like the idea Walter of and um Monique of a community field where we have several different um groups there talking about issues so you can like one stop shopping you can go for one item but you see something else that might grab you and, and get it done at the same time so that's something to look look into um and the sites, you know, different, whether it be the forum or the other space you're talking about outside or Riverbank, mm -hmm. um, as long as we can engage people. Um, I think someone said at my other meeting, we need to take. Yeah, meet people where they are. Take it to the people. It was Jonathan, I think, Senegab, who Senegal, said that, right. that we should meet, meet people, people yeah. where they uh -huh. are. And so That's doing it in the street or in some store, well, some empty storefront is a way to increase our visibility and accessibility so that people know we're here and not hiding behind, you know, anything. So, yeah, yeah. Well, we talked about even on the economic development side, getting storefronts and using them with the MBA students from Columbia to talk about their businesses and how they could improve their, you know, the business. Um, that would be a good idea. So, 
as they pass, it's right there. Rather than having to go on the campus where people are often put off um, venturing to. So I like those ideas as well. Um, lastly, I want to go back to, if I can, the survey I brought up earlier. Let's see. Um, I know Barry had some comments on it as well. There it is. Now, how do I go? Share screen. This one. Okay. Uh, so I'm just putting this back up again for anyone who might have come later. And the survey we're working on, community survey, just to get people's uh, feedback on what they think is important. So I'll have this sent out so you can have a copy and take a look at it and take feedback. I mean, Barry had some good comments. We can include their elected officials. Do you know who they are? Uh, maybe how to reach them. Um, any other ideas off the top at the moment for this section? I put in the con in the chat um, uh, uh, quality of services like from utilities and or businesses in the neighborhood, like okay. uh, Con Edison, the phone companies, cable folks. Uh, the, the if they went to a bank and they didn't get the proper cert, that type of stuff, stuff that you know that the consumer type um, thing should also be included. Okay. Health centers also. If you went to a health a health center and you were kind of, you felt put off, you know, that mm -hmm. could be noted also. Yeah, I was gonna say something about health on here for sure. If they even, you know, have a health home, <laughs> do they know what a health home is? And when they go, do they feel like they're being serviced? Um, something like that. Okay. I, I would also Hi. add a suggestion um, where it says where you where you where are your top five concerns and priorities. Maybe you could list some possibilities, like some so they they can something that's already there, and they can check them off, and then they can use room to add others. Like, are you concerned about public safety? Are you concerned about uh, transportation? Are you concerned about crime or something like that? And just put those um, as like suggestions. It's like how you have like, do you own rent? Like you have right. own rent, you can just add suggestions and then put a place where they can add others, um, you know, if they want to fill it in themselves. Yeah, okay, that, good idea. I, I placed in the chat, I recommend we ask quality of life questions such as related to cleanliness of streets and sidewalks, the uh -huh. overflowing or lack of public trash containers, noise complaints, dog waste, the impact of um, cannabis shops bike riding, the use yeah. of green space, parks, and recreational activities. Okay, that's in the chat. It's um, in the chat. Mm -hmm. Good, good ideas. Uh, that was brought up recently by a neighbor as well. Um, mm -hmm. I get a lot of questions. People know I'm on the board. Um, so I try to go out the back door of my building sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> we have my t-shirt proud member of CB9. Uh, I tried it, that's how I got on the board by asking questions. Actually, uh, one of my neighbors was on the board and I kept asking questions. You should get on the board and here I am. So- Be careful for what you ask for. <laughs> it might come true, yeah. But I'm only kidding. <laughs> I'm proud, proud to serve and we've made some changes and made some inroads. So uh, looking forward to this next chapter. Miss Sydney Mortensen, you have a question. Yeah, yeah. Um, so speaking of new members and um, uh, getting involved and all of that, I had a I had a thought or a, a question. So I know you and Barry are, and Monique are gonna start looking at committees uh, assignments for our new members, and we have a lot of new members. So yes, mm -hmm. a lot of new folks to assign. And um, if if you could just explain that process a little bit, I know some of that comes from the interview process and the application they made to the Manhattan Borough President. But I was wondering if, you know, the thought of maybe doing, I, you know, for lack of a better term, a speed dating kind of thing <laughs> where we could, you know, all the new members could meet some of the, the you know, the co-chairs talk about what the issues are. Because I've gotten maybe three or four new members asking me if I can have coffee with them. <laughs> and I'm, oh, I'm nice. happy to try and find time to do that. And perhaps I'm the only one that got that, but I don't know. 
Um, <laughs> and just wondering, you know, maybe, you know, a situation where we have, it could be online and do like, you know, separate rooms where people could go in or, uh, or in person, I don't know. And we say, you know, what our top three things we're working on are, find out a little bit more about them, you know, just like quick question and answer sessions. I, I don't know if that's something of interest to help, you know, kind of match people with committees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a thought, Barry, you there? Uh, yeah. I'm yeah. here. Um, that that does sound interesting, if we can pull it off. I know. Um, I, know. I mm. will note that the staff have been pretty religiously updating our YouTube channel, which, if you didn't okay. know, we have a YouTube channel with all of our um, committees. Uh, committee meetings from Zoom, the recordings being on YouTube. And so um that may be something that they can also do to like see what each committee is doing um hopefully they won't judge housing too hard by its last meeting which went on very long but it would also um, be nice for the co-chairs to meet them and get to know them yeah. too yes it's, yes um we did i mean i've explained this publicly at general board meetings and to the new members and i'll say it again here generally speaking we like to keep committees maxed out at nine members because that means that quorum is five people and once you get to 10 quorum becomes six and it can be hard to achieve quorum um and signi i know you know this as a co-chair of a large committee yes um so there is more interest in uniform services youth education and libraries and housing zoning and land use than there are like unless we would ex unless we lift the cap to 11 um you know there's I, and i don't i don't definitely not proposing we lift any caps i'm just saying you know uh matching correctly making sure you know the yeah. the folks match with the, the right committees so so, so it, it's a, it's a proposal well taken um we'd have to put some coordination to it over the summer um, yeah, it doesn't have to be this year. Maybe we look at it next year, but you know, it might be an interesting thing, even at the beginning of next season, if if that's something yeah. we can. Mm -hmm. um, but but I will say that you know we do really heavily look at what people indicated in their application to the borough president's office. Yeah. Um, and so, for people who did not indicate a committee preference, that makes our lives rather difficult. Um, right. But but yeah. Anyway. I will leave it there. And Victor, I don't know if you have anything else to add. Yeah, well, I'm having the office reach out to some people who did not indicate um, their preference on committees and in speaking to um, some of the newer members at general board, I was just saying we can't always match up everything you ask for because we have to balance committees. So I took a look at people's backgrounds often, and they might not have asked for that particular committee, but their background is in that area. So that might be one of the committees they're assigned to. I know like seniors meets during the day, which is a difficult committee to fill. Um, I think we had two people that were interested in seniors, so we welcome that right off the bat. Whereas, like you said, uniform services, housing, land use get a lot of interest, but we still have other economic development, we have things of this nature that we have to to um, fill as as well. So we try to, you know, be as fair as possible with without creating an overload on one particular committee or a deficit on another. So to but your idea is a good one, Sydney, and might something we might take a look at um, trying to implement just so people can get to know each other. So thank you. Um, Walter, you had a hand up? Yeah, I did. Uh, it, it, I, I think six of us came in uh, 2018. Uh, none of us were given the committees that we asked for. We were all randomly assigned. And, uh, and something to the other, and other end. I put in, you was talking about meeting with the new president, you and Barry and right. um, Monique. And I was asking, would it be possible if the co-chairs could be added to that meeting as well? I mean, if it's cumbersome, then we can do it at another time. But just a thought. It well, might be. I think they use the um, holiday. What is that? The community breakfast. Uh huh. The president is there meeting the community, and a lot of board members, all board members, are invited to attend that meeting or that lunch and breakfast. I think it's the first week in July when the invitations come out. I share it with everyone. Oh, and you please also get a, And you also get a personal invitation because they call and ask for your contact information. Thank you. Great. That's great. All right. 
Yeah, having the whole group might be cumbersome. Um, as you mentioned, Walter, what we could do is take some questions along with us when we meet to ask the new um, president. Uh, she said she's community minded, so we want to make sure we're right in the forefront, letting her know who we are, what we do, and you know our goals for the community. So, well, before we do that, I'll reach out to co-chairs and and other members as well to see what questions we might want to ask. You know, within some type of limits. Okay. Um, any are questions? there any uh, yeah are there any yes. other committees that are missing a co-chair i kind of feel like i've been the chair um any yes we have arts and we have uh, yours and arts and culture okay at the moment oh. uh we're looking at yours we're looking at both uh heather so noted yeah um, definitely look at both committees and you will have a co-chair as we start up again we'll be reaching out to you, myself, Barry, and Monique, to kind of discuss that as well to see what we can get the right fit for you. But some Great. will be okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So noted. And and um, we'll take a look at the attendance of some of your members again, just to make sure they now are. Now you all did, you received my attendance yes list for the entire year, right? You you yes. went to the yes. last sheet where I gave the little group. The graphics, right. the little that table. Was, okay. That was excellent. Yeah. So we're taking a okay. look at that as well, just to make okay. sure um, we have that. And I sent something to Hawks. Who's that? Wesley Hamilton, is it? The uh, manager for Riverside Park recently. Uh, I think okay. I got you on that. Just about the markings on the walkway on the green the greenway, which I call it, that runs along the Hudson here. I just noticed there's very few markings of, on the roadway, caution signs or anything that I see further down um, along the greenway and past 96th Street. The markings are so great, but up here there's nothing, no cautionary signs, no signs that say no motorized vehicles, none of that. So something I'll definitely be working on with you to make sure that happens. Um, all right. Um, any other comments or questions? New members, kind of getting a full, getting an idea of uh, things. I'm yeah, really thanks. It's been a great it. background. <laughs> yes. Good it background, Miss. Very Weary? good background. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Glad. Yes. I think you're very. You're 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 you really you cover the waterfront. <laughs> I try. Barry, your hands up. Yes. Did we speak on the $20 million affordable housing fund under item two, was it? Yes. Um, Pat Watler Johnson spoke. Pat, you still on? You can want to bring that back up? Yes, I am. Um, okay. Not not much has changed, Barry. In the recent meeting, there was still there was a twenty million dollars there. Ten million um, had been, um, I guess, allocated to WHTC by the city. Two million of that was used for um, the um, Marcus Garvey project um, as a loan. It was since returned and with interest. So right now, there's still you know the money is available. Yeah, I I would just want us to. And and Sigmi, maybe we can tackle this offline. I know Till is politically explosive, but um, you know, I, I would like to see if we can generate some ideas for using that within our borders so that the money doesn't get lent out to 10 or 12 again. Yeah. Well, I think it's a good idea because I remember in in various meetings, WHGC had asked CB9 for, um, had asked us for ideas. Um, so whatever ideas you can come up, I'm sure that they would be willing to discuss it. They'd be welcome, you know, any ideas that you have. Because if you remember, part of the issue was that there was there available land in CB9 to develop. That was a question. So if you have suggestions, I'm sure that, um, I shouldn't say I'm sure, but I, I feel quite certain that they would be willing to, um, you know, to listen to any ideas that CB9 had, because um, since they had asked for suggestions before. Yeah, that's a good point. I remember speaking with Kofi, you know, a few years back, just trying mm -hmm. to find anything that was affordable. 
right in the area or yeah z had mentioned it also in oh. judge tingling so yeah i i agree there's there's if there's ideas that the board has you know begin a dialogue with whtc yep all right um anything else okay if nothing else, I will close the meeting. I thank you all for coming, especially our newest members have not been assigned yet, but um, try to make as many meetings as possible we, yes. to make the assignments. And we'll be in touch um, over the summer. We will have an orientation for new members coming up sometime probably next month. Mm -hmm. We can sit down and, and chat and talk mm -hmm. about what's going on and get ideas. So... Uh, Barry, else. are you still Barry? Are you still there? I'm still here. You you said there were three people to send the um the thing about the um the um the budget about the seed the cuts. You said they were the 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 uh the mayor the uh speaker of the house and it was someone else you mentioned and I didn't get that person's name. Uh, the budget. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah. Uh, well, okay. You got, once something <laughs> leaves my mouth, it leaves my brain. No. Um. <laughs> Mayor, we you, you get it. Just yeah, send it on. Okay. Maybe the DIFTA commissioner. The, the I don't know. You, you rolled it off kind of quick, so I didn't get it. So all right, I'll. I'll you know what I'm going to do, Walter? I'm going to go to our YouTube channel and I'm going to look at it. Um, see oh, if we right. have it there. What about the, the chair of the senior? If there's probably a chair for senior issues, did you mention that already? No, no, no. This is something I mentioned Thursday, but it's actually. Uh, forgive me. Victor, it's actually yeah. a good thing to note. The city budget process is beginning two months earlier this year. It usually begins in August. It's beginning in June, which is where they start gathering feedback from community boards on the various agencies mm -hmm. and, and the priorities in our districts that eventually go into the mayor's preliminary budget plan that gets released in January. So we have to turn in our submission by October but they're doing it earlier this year. And you thought, does that mean they're going to be doing budget, the agency consultation meetings earlier? No, they're at the same time. They're just allowing us to submit, review and submit our budget requests earlier. Okay, yeah, we're not going to. We'll, we'll submit it around Halloween. <laughs> yeah, our Probably. deadline our deadline is still October 31st. Okay, got it. But But it would behoove us to get a jump on it now. So yeah. I, I already emailed a couple of committees um, about this, the ones that tend to have large capital assets in the district, which is schools, libraries, senior centers, and parks. Mm. Um, but yeah, if, uh, if, if anyone else you know wants to talk to a nonprofit in the agency that they think might get city funding or others to try to understand the budget needs that they're experiencing, that will be very helpful come September because it's always a mad dash between September and October to get our budget priorities in. Barry, Victor, Deirdre, if you could just hang around five minutes after everyone leaves, I just want to update you on something. Okay, can do. Uh, if nothing else, generally, um, thank you all for coming. I will see you at the orientation of new members and Always available. Have good a good evening. Good night, everyone. Good, good night. night. Good, good night, night everybody. Good night. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night. 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 Okay. Oh, we lost Deirdre. Oh, we lost Deirdre. Oh. I can get her on the phone. Okay. Or I could call her afterwards. I just wanted to basically um, alert you. Um, oh. Upon leaving, I got a call from Jay Gottlieb. He's the OMB um, director oh. over right. our budget. And uh, last week or a week and a half ago, he informed me that we had a PS surplus of 48.5. That's $48,500. Right. He informed me today apologetically um, stating that we don't have that amount. Um, he miscalculated due to some 
um, I think it had to do with the raises that were given to um, not the civil service, not a civil service, but the city employees and some other stuff with the city. He told me that we have uh, 34, five, not 48, five. So we have to adjust. So that thing you sent today has to be adjusted? Yes, okay. I, have to, I have to adjust it first thing tomorrow morning. Um, so that sounds suspicious. That gap sounds suspiciously like our rent. Well, you know, the rent was already in it. He said that when he said we had the 48.5, he said that we had to we had to pay our rent out of that. Right. But then 48 minus 34 is 13 and some change, which was exactly the amount we owed in rent. I'm, 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 it, it, so, it, it may be different, but I'm, I'm just. No, no, I, I, I get you. I, I understand. But if that's the case, then why they're not paying it directly so they're taking it twice because we're paying it i don't know i'm gonna yeah. I, I need to send I my know. email I know. Yes. and i know victor you wanted us to look into the awning for the office um i'm going to try my damnedest to make sure that we get um the top priority of our yeah, yeah. items so, for the office just to go back, since I'm new to this part of it, the rent mm -hmm. is paid directly from OMB to Columbia, or is it paid? No, no. Columbia, as Jay announced it to me, Columbia is our purse. They put the money in our purse. And they're OMB. No, I'm sorry, not Columbia. OMB is our purse. They right. put the money in our purse to pay our bills, which includes Columbia and our other um, vendors and contracts. Oh, okay. So we have to pay rent out of the out of that. Oh, money. yeah, we have it's to not pay, pay directly from OMB. Yeah. That, that the was... only the only way that we wouldn't have to pay rent rent would be eliminated if it if we were in a city owned building. Okay. CB one does not pay rent. We need to be on campus. We shouldn't be paying rent to Columbia either. But that's another. But, story. You know that yeah, that's a totally different story, and I don't even know yeah. if they'll follow through. And not, they may still charge us. <laughs> it's scary, but. Well, let me see. Well, yeah. Maybe so I thought they did. I just wanted y'all to know that I just found out when I was leaving the office to um, hurry home to start the strategic planning committee. He gave me a call apologizing over and over. Oh, okay. He gave me the wrong figures. So I'm going, to, I'm going to adjust it first thing tomorrow morning because tomorrow's the deadline for mod submissions. Okay, so 30, yeah. yeah, I did see that in the yeah. email you sent back yep. to him. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so, that's it. All right, have a good evening. Okay, you Oh, too. I'll copy the chat. I'll send it to you, Victor. Okay, great. I uh -huh. took some notes, but yeah, I'll uh, take a look at that. Okay. Make, make it better. Okay, have right. a good night. Have a good Bye -bye. night. Good night, Barry. Good night. Bye.